A co-locational library service can be a library service that hosts a library and public museum space or a library service that hosts a public gallery space. In April 1833, the good citizens of Peterborough, New Hampshire, created a radical new concept, a public library service. All town residents, regardless of income or status, had the right to freely share the community's stored knowledge. Their only obligation was to retain the information on time and in good condition, allowing others to exercise that same right. Fast forward to present day. The public library's aim is still viewed in the same way, though with a few slight changes. When we think of libraries, we tend to think of books, and rightly so, but libraries are way much more than bookstores. About 30% of the people who visit libraries don't borrow books or even DVDs. For a greater number of people than we might care to believe, the library serves as a warm and dry sanctuary, a place they can sit without fear of being bothered. For others, it is a refuge from loneliness, a place full of hustle and bustle where you could attend a concert, hear a lecture, or read a magazine free of charge. In The Great Good Place, Ray Oldenberg defines the significance of a third place in a healthy society. Neither work nor home, the third place is a neutral community space where people come together voluntarily and informally in ways that level social inequity and promote community engagement and social connection. Libraries have now been defined as public spaces. They are no longer just for accessing stored knowledge across the community. They have become interactive technology powerhouses. Some key issues affecting co-locational services are The first co-locational library service I will be talking about today is the Mascot Library Service located in Botany Bay Council. The George Hanna Memorial Museum and Mascot, the City of Botany Bay Libraries provides library service to a community of 36,000 with branches located at East Gardens and Mascot. The library service provides a wide range of services to meet the educational, recreational, and informational needs for people of all ages. George Hanna Memorial Museum is a local history museum. Established in 1995, it exhibits social history which reflects the broad community within the council precinct area. Exhibition topics include the local wetlands, sports, industry, the local market gardens and the multicultural experience of lives of people living in and around Botany Council. It aims to provide visitors with the experience to find out how the past has shaped the local area of today. Client visitors are encouraged to take part in future exhibitions. They can tell their stories in the oral history program and lend items for the display. There is a comprehensive blog tied to the Library and Museum Council's webpage which outlines exhibitions and upcoming events within the museum and local council area. The second co-locational service I will discuss is Hairsville City Library Museum Gallery Service. It is a little known fact that Hairsville has a 100 year plus history of library services for its residents. Although not achieving continuous 100-year provision, Council operated a public library between 1890 and 1920, and later from 1964 onwards. Hairsville City Museum and Gallery is a local history museum. It serves the St George region and works extensively with the local community to develop art and history exhibitions. Hairsville City Museum and Gallery has a large indigenous history and art collection, a recent exhibition about indigenous locals called Out of the Woods talked about how the native population and landscape in the local community area since the arrival of European settlers was progressively altered and irrevocably changed within a century. An art exhibition titled Ceremony was an exhibition of artworks by senior indigenous Aboriginal men from across our nation. Some travelling exhibitions here are 
Path of the Dragon, a Chinese migration exhibition and a knitted garden, which have both been recently displayed and proved quite popular. Virtual exhibitions in Hairsville currently include Making Tracks, 125 years of rail transport in Hairsville, and Living on the Water's Edge, Memories of St. George, which include both archival photographs and photographs of artifacts. Most of the exhibitions here seem to focus on local history and preservation of local cross-cultural heritage. The Hairsville City Museum and Gallery has a range of exhibitions available for hire. Themes for each exhibition can be tailored to any community. It's $50 per week per exhibition for a maximum of four weeks. The third co-locational service I will talk about is the Amaze Gallery, which is located in the State Library of New South Wales. The Amaze Gallery was opened in order to give the public of Australia free access to little known and little seen wonders from the State Library's collection of over 5 million artefacts, as well as the stories that are behind them. Amaze was launched this year and regularly aims to change displays curated by a wide range of people in order to bring different viewpoints and interpretations into the displays. The first exhibition included objects from Sir William Dixon's private collection, which includes the only surviving copy of Ned Kelly's Wanted poster, sketchbooks by artist Norman Lindsay, and features 60 incredibly rare and often quirky objects from the Sir William Dixon collection, including the only known pirated copy of Charles Dickens' Pickwick Club, circa 1838. The Greatest of the World Exhibition Tour, a collection of 19th century photographs and artworks of goldfield life in New South Wales and Victoria, including little known stories featured in the exhibition. The Amaze Gallery ties in with the recently launched social media application, Curio, an interactive guide to the library's historic collections that you can download straight to your phone or mobile device and let you browse the State Library's rich and treasured collection. These days people are spending more time in libraries. However, in the age of technology that we live, the internet provides information straight to people's fingertips, making it less likely for people in the community to use the library for sole research or study purpose. In Critical Issues in Public Library Planning, the New South Wales Experience, published in the Australian Library Journal, David J. Jones writes about people spending longer in libraries whilst their borrowing habits are down. Economic hard times encourage people to borrow DVDs, books and newspapers rather than buy them and to use public computer terminals for job searches and personal internet activity. Library usage is increasing by 15 to 30 percent, while budgets are being cut by 10 to 15 percent. By co-locating libraries with gallery services, it makes financial sense, not only for the library service, but for local government and community too. By sharing one general space, the operating costs, for example, the electricity, maintenance and material costs are kept down. Planning, building and zoning costs are also shared, yet the governing bodies remain the same. Co-locating facilities means more jobs are created, more information can be accessed, more technological and cultural centres can be developed and implemented across the community. Cohabiting galleries and museums with library space makes a significant impact on the library industry by helping to create a people and services focused facility rather than a process and collections based facility. Libraries and museums are strong community anchors that together with formal education and other community organisations create a network of learning within a community. A co-locational space not only benefits library clients in the community by making their visit to the library more valuable but by engaging them with local culture and heritage. It also benefits the library service by allowing a broader population of the community through its doors. Museums and galleries bring a diverse network of people in. They offer ever-changing exhibitions, fun interactive workshops, 
children's workshops, virtual exhibitions and local history exhibitions. Some co-locational services offer venue hire and function rooms which would reach out to the corporate and business sectors across the community, allowing to raise revenue and allowing for potential new networks, professional relationships and sponsorships to develop. Many gallery and museum spaces also feature cafes, restaurants and shops which also play a part in attracting a more diverse population into the library while simultaneously helping to raise revenue and secure community employment. Whilst visiting these co-locational spaces, community members can see what their library has to offer them with their own eyes. Community members can participate in, share and preserve history, whilst also enjoying learning and passing on the knowledge. In closing today, I would like to mention that as collaboration, co-location and blending of services continue, the boundary between museum and library will likely be less distinct. This does not mean that the unique mission and identity of an individual institution must disappear. Rather, institutional goals can be expanded and enhanced through collaborations that combine resources, knowledge and experience for mutual benefit. I feel that this will be the way for the future. Thank you for your time today. I had fun researching my presentation.